Hi everyone, I am so excited to have you here on my channel. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back to Black Cat Crimes. And if you're new, thank you for joining us today. I plan to create several cases in this series and this video will be the introduction to the playlist that it's on. Um, and so the first case is actually going to be posted at the exact same time as this video. So you can just click right on over to it whenever you're ready. And this series will be called Men Going Missing from Their Cars. So for a while now, even possibly decades from the cases I can think of off the top of my head, there's been a phenomenon of young men going missing from their cars. Now I'll admit, I'm not the first person to make this connection. This connection was originally brought to my attention by the Crime Junkie podcast. They released an episode on October 25th, 2021, titled Missing Young Men from Their Cars. In this episode, they discuss the cases of three young men who have gone missing from their cars. The three men are Daniel Robinson, who the first video in this series will be about, Jason Landry, and Brian Swanson. But here's the thing. They are not the only men to have mysteriously gone missing from their cars. When I was listening to this podcast episode, I was shopping in Publix, just doing my normal grocery shopping, and I remember standing in the middle of the cracker aisle, like literally holding a box of crackers and just being like, oh my gosh, they are right. There are so many younger men that we've heard about in cases, whether they're popular or a little lesser known, that have just mysteriously vanished from their cars and literally never been seen again. They are going missing under the most bizarre of circumstances and we just don't know what happened to them. And this is something that has been going on for a while and is still, as shown by Daniel Robinson's case, going on to this day. So these men didn't pack up everything, put it in their car, and just drive off into the sunset. Very often, they had intentions of what they were doing and where they were going in those moments. And then suddenly, they're gone. Their family and friends don't know where they are and nobody's heard from them. Then, at a later date, sometimes hours later, sometimes days, sometimes weeks or months later, their car is found and the men are nowhere to be seen. And here's the thing, I'm not talking that they left their keys and their wallet in their car and then they just haven't been found. I'm talking like the clothes that they were wearing that day, the clothes off their back, are found in or around the car it's just scattered, but the men are nowhere to be found. They very often left behind wallets, phones, keys, laptops, backpacks, belongings, clothes that they were wearing, shoes, and then in the future, you know, their social security numbers and bank accounts and all of their information is never touched again. Sometimes the men's cars have been pulled off to the side of the road and parked, and then it just seems like the men walked off into nowhere, um, while other times they are found crashed and very damaged with the men nowhere to be found anywhere nearby and often not even signs of injury, like no blood, no ripped, torn clothing, nothing like that. It's just a crashed car missing its driver. I think the thing that makes this phenomenon so weird, hearing about it and thinking about it in terms of what we know in the cases that have been covered for men who have gone missing from their cars, is that there is such a wide range of behavior beforehand. Like, some men are totally fine, nothing going on, they were driving somewhere and then disappeared into nowhere. Other men seem to be going through hard times or struggling either with money or with personal feelings. Um, so, I, you know, Daniel Robinson will be a good example of that, the case that we're going to cover next. Um, Bryce Las Pisa is one of these really well-known cases where he was acting pretty strange beforehand, before he went missing, and now he's just gone. Nobody's seen him since he disappeared all those years ago. And even in other cases, there are men who are literally on the phone with people who know them when they just up and disappear, when they're just gone. Either the phone gets cut off, their phone dies, they say, you know, oh, I'm going to go take care of something and I'll call you right back. And then they're just gone. Absolutely gone. And it is... 
there's no one thing that could point to what happens to these men because the range of what they're going through seems to be so varied at the time that they disappear so mysteriously from their cars. So beyond the three cases I mentioned earlier, there are several more cases that are pretty well known. Um, if you've heard of Rico Harris going missing, um, as I mentioned, Bryce Las Pisa, he went missing from his car as well. Daniel Robinson's case has been getting a lot of coverage, but it, his father is still searching for him, so we're going to cover that one too. Um, Brandon Swanson. I mean, there's just so many cases that I know that I can make a whole series on this because these men are still missing and we need to hopefully find them because they didn't go nowhere. They didn't just disappear off the face of the earth. They're somewhere. It is so odd to realize the connection between these cases and the fact that none of these men have been found. And of course, this is especially true in cases where investigators feel that the men have left voluntarily. You know, they're not searching as hard. They are not putting in quite as much effort as, you know, the families would hope they would put in because they feel that these men have left of their own volition. And while this happens, while men and women and even kids do leave on their own and most missing people come back relatively quickly, even within a year, it, usually it's much faster, a couple days or weeks, at what point do we have to realize that this person probably didn't go missing on their own? And if people had, you know, done a really great investigation at the very beginning, we might have more leads. And let's say the men did go missing of their own volition. You would think that after years and years of them being missing and their cases becoming national news and being covered and their families constantly searching for them, they would have eventually, after years, reached out and told somebody they were okay. They would have gotten in contact with somebody from their old life. But the thing is, none of them have. Not even the men who seemed the most troubled in those days and hours before they went missing, who possibly could have gone missing on their own and chosen to walk away from their lives because of what they were struggling with. They have never reached out to anybody from their former life. Not old girlfriends, not family, not extended family, not, you know, friends, drug dealers, whatever it could be. They haven't reached out to anybody and they've never, you know, tried to access their bank accounts, tried to access their social security number or their birth certificates. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't know how to get a fake birth certificate or social security number. I wouldn't know how to begin going about doing that. And I am in the age range of these young, when these young men go missing. So I don't know how this many young men would understand how to completely set up a brand new life with no money to continue living on as they are. So sometimes in these cases, police have put forth the idea that maybe the men wanted to hurt themselves or kill themselves. And the only problem I have with this theory is that no one, no one has found any of their bodies. And you can take precautions. So, you know, hopefully your own family doesn't find your body or maybe you won't be found immediately um, for, you know, hopes that someone can't save you, things like that. You can take those type of precautions, but their bodies have never been found anywhere near their car. So, and they haven't been found any time after that. You can't bury your own body when you commit suicide. You can't hide your own body beyond just going somewhere more secluded. So I don't know that that is really a great theory to put forward at all because it's just kind of impossible. And even with all these young men who have gone missing, we still don't have answers as to why this is happening. More men are going missing this way. Daniel Robinson, for instance, only went missing a little more than a year ago. All true crime topics are close to my heart because, you know, whenever you're researching these victims and when you get really caught up in listening to true crime, you care about these people and you hope they find justice and you hope they find their loved ones. But I personally have two older brothers who are in the range of um, men who have gone missing like this and 
I just can't imagine how that would feel to me if one day they drove off and I just never got to find them and we never knew what happened to them. I just can't imagine what it would be like for them to go missing and have absolutely no answers. I don't think I would ever be able to stop looking and my heart absolutely goes out to all the families of all missing persons and the men who have gone missing like this because, you know, a lot of times there's a breadcrumbs, there's a trail you can follow, and in this case, there just doesn't seem to be any. Whether they were on good terms at the time with their loved young men who went missing or not, they're still left with all these questions and all this heartache and all of those years wondering what happened to them and where did they end up. And as I said a few times in this video, Daniel Robinson's case will be the first one we discuss in this series. Um, it's going to be two videos, so the first video will be up at the exact same time as this one. If you have any case suggestions for this series, please feel free to comment them down below. I would really appreciate that. And I'll be linking the first video in Daniel's case at the end screen at the end of this video, so you can just go ahead and click on it. Please feel free to subscribe if you want to follow along with this series. Thank you so much for being with me here today, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!